There are few like us, few that understand the true meaning of growing up in paradise. We were here long before the concrete towers yielded the sun from grasping our shores, long before the masters thwarted our paths, and long before the young needed machines to communicate. To us, this was a chat room. This was Facebook. This was a search engine. This was how we logged in, and this was how we rode. We feasted like kings. We flew without wings. We rode like knights, and we danced in tights. However, this lucky few here tonight all shared one passion, music. And our mentor, our scholar, and our conductor was none other than Mr. John J. Filoni. Next to perform is the North Langley Junior High School Green Machine, Class J.A. The band director is Mr. John Filoni, first of all, Mr. Bernie Pittman. Um, <clears throat> so, so you might remember me as uh, the drum instructor for the Green Machine and, uh, and I think music arranger for the Green Machine. My name is Tommy Santino and I graduated in 1983 and I played the trumpet. Hi, my name is Courtney Wang. I was in North Miami Junior High Green Machine and also in North Miami Senior High Pioneer Regiment. I'm Walter Strump, class of 1980, and I started out in junior high playing the trumpet. I ended up with a French horn. I'm Tim Whaley. I graduated in class of 82. Hi, I'm Wendy, Wendy Blanton. I graduated in 1982. Hi, I'm Tina DePrima. I graduated in 1983. Hi, it's Steve Street, and I'm here to talk a little bit about John Filoni, my favorite teacher. Um, I was gonna say my favorite band director, but I don't think I had another band director. I remember walking into the, the band room in North Miami Junior, and um, you know, I was, I was told by my other friends, you gotta take this class. So I just kind of, all right, all right I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna get in this class. One of the main reasons was the band room had air conditioning, and you know the rest of the school didn't. So, so that was a, the first reason they got me in the door. Okay, the first time I met Mr. Filoni, um, I had been at a football game on a Friday night, and that next Monday morning, I went into the band room and asked if I could join marching band. I was very impressed and very excited because the boys were cute. I met Mr. Filoni my first day of school in the band room, and I was in awe that he could actually teach each one of the instruments to all beginning band students. I was mesmerized by that. The first time I met Filoni, I, I'll never forget. He had that Tom Selleck, 70s porn stash thing going on, but it worked for him somehow. We thought that John Filoni was the coolest cat we'd ever met. He was Fonzie, he was everything. In sixth grade, I recall going to a field trip to North Miami Junior High School. And I just remember being completely overwhelmed because I never was exposed to all these instruments. So I saw all these crazy instruments and I saw this, this, this wild, big cowboy looking dude, you know, directing them with this big ass mustache. I, I was there, I was just overwhelmed. And I said, are we allowed to join this? And they said, sure. The guy was just super cool. And back then we were all watching Happy Days. And to me, he was like a real life Fonzie. So I walk in the band room and you could just tell whoever was in charge, this was a, a manicured, fine-tuned machine. Uh, fine-tuned green machine. Band room. You guys remember the band room. Immaculate. Just absolutely immaculate. It's not normal. Band rooms are chaotic. Band rooms have stuff everywhere. The band director's office is just like piled high with stuff. Not Filoni. Everything is lined up. The chairs, the spacing in the chairs uh, was exactly the same. And, uh, and there, was a, there was just like a, a whole system of how you, you went in and got your instrument. His methodology was absolutely amazing as a teacher because you guys would come in the room, you'd make a hard left turn, you'd go into the instrument room, only one way. And you used to get your instrument even by section. So the flutes would go, then the, tr the clarinets would go, and so on. And you get your instrument. The case had to be put away. It was not to be left on the floor or anything like that. Then you filed out and you got into your, into your seats. It was just such a well-oiled machine and just so 
pristine. He was a uh, he was a really clean guy. Super clean. I got to go to his apartment, you know, after rehearsals or whatever. That place was immaculate. Like every fiber of the carpet was vacuumed. Every surface was cleaned. Every book was on the bookshelf. Uh, back then they hadn't invented the phrase OCD. It was amazing. And you go down to his car, you probably remember this. He had a, ra his car was immaculate. He'd wash it every day. I want to say it was a Toyota SR5 maybe, or what kind of car? But I remember he had cleaned the damn engine. He'd wash the interior of this car. He would, he would shampoo it. He would vacuum it. And he washed the engine. And it also changed your oil like a thousand times a week, you know? He actually showed me how to wash my engine. <laughs> he, he would clean the engine of the car like, like it was a plate that you were going to eat dinner off of, and he'd do it daily. And then he'd get to school, and if there was any bit of dirt, any dust, he'd wipe it off. He'd have that rag ready to go. The rest of the school could have been a dump, but that band room, the floor was waxed. The, uh, uh, you know, I mean, John would be in there uh, cleaning. Uh, I remember even helping on the weekends and so on, just to make sure that it was always, always the perfect, perfect situation. The neat thing about that, as kind of a music educator, that I, I've been, I still do it, is that you all had an amazing base, ama an amazing structure, and from that structure, you had a lot of freedom. You had the, the structure of knowing exactly what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, what you can and can't do. And all that stuff gave you the ability to be great musicians because on top of all that, he taught the basics. I was so inspired in beginning band, I, I, I saw the marching band. We had this marching band, the Green Machine, and we were only the, one of the only schools in, in the county that had a marching band in junior high. It really wasn't heard of. Yeah, we were like part of the Green Machine, and I could totally remember that. We were, I think, we we're the only junior high marching band of that caliber that level. The Green Machine was a group that really was, you weren't supposed to be as good as you were, but one of the greatest things for teaching middle school is that you just don't tell the kids that they can't do something and they just do it. Green Machine was really, really good. And I can remember marching in parades and all these senior highs that were just these little punk kids. And you know, it was great. But these guys were competitive. They went to, to local competitions, competed against high schools very successfully. Actually, at, at, they got so good that they were better than high school bands in the area. And I clearly remember us being disallowed the opportunity to compete at FBA competitions because the band directors all banded together and they said they don't want this junior high school band competing against us because they were good. Through the years of 1974 to 1979, with Scott Director by his side, John Filoni brought the Green Machine to new heights, marching in Disney parades, regional competitions, and even a guest spot on Dinah Shore. I remember Sally and Amy telling me that they were going to be on the Dinah Shore show. And just turning on to Channel 10 WPLG that day and just watching, Dinah Shore said, here's the North Miami Junior High Green Machine. That gave me tingling all around knowing that I got friends who are playing in this band. I can still remember being on the beach, um, all, all of us getting together, the wind blowing. And I remember the first time seeing Dinah Shore. I can still remember she was in like a light blouse and her hair kind of blowing and finally only talking to her. So proud, man. It was like, it was a, a spectacular. This is a junior high band. This is not a senior high band. This is a junior high band on a national show, the Dinah Shore Show. At that time, that was like, boom. <laughs> His mighty green machine struck fear into local high school music programs. But his quest for a state competition at the high school level finally came in the winter of 1977. We uh, went to the Gold Coast competition, and this was like the best marching bands at the time uh, in South Florida. Being a junior high band, we were, we're, you know, we were about 100 big, and you know, we were, we were going against the big boys. You know, we went to the show and we're thinking in our heads, ah, oh, maybe we'll be, maybe we might not win, but there's there's like 15 bands and we'll probably be second or third or something, you know, and maybe, you know, do do pretty well, honorable mention, something like that. And finally he said, just do your best. And we were just beaten. Just like we were, I, I think we were taught a lesson. John Filoni came on the bus and he's like, you know, 
You know, sometimes you, uh, you just, you just not, you need a dose of reality, just not as good as you think. And, uh, and, and it, I mean, it made sense. We're junior high kids. And John, you said the only, where, only place we can go from here is up. So, and you were right, you know, it was a good lesson to learn in, in junior high, and it really set us up for when we got into high school, uh, for what was to come. And although their highest score was second to last, they'd soon find out their band director was second to none. Uh, and then I heard, um, if he was leaving, he was going to the high school. For me, I was devastated because I was like, what's gonna happen to the green machine? I followed Filoni, so to speak, because I thought he, he had an impact on me in junior high school. So when he announced that he was going to leave and go to North Miami Senior High, I was a little bummed. And, and I, I don't want another band director, not even for a year, not even for a minute. And uh, I remember, honestly, uh, going home and uh, sitting in my room and crying. I, I remember just sitting up and crying that I wasn't gonna be able to, uh, to be in John Filoni's band. You came in when I was a junior. I had uh, Miss Casbero as our band director before you. And things were pretty loosey-goosey. Show up when you can, play what you can, don't worry about what you can't. Try to get the steps right and we'll make it through. When we, knew, when we heard Filoni was coming, we knew that our band was destined for greatness. I was, I was thrilled. I, I couldn't have been happier. It was like exciting, I didn't, you know, it was great. Mrs. Casbero, she was tough, but not really. We got away with a lot of stuff with her. And then you showed up, and man, the shit hit the fan. I'd heard, you know, uh, how rewarding it was and everything, but what what a tremendous amount of uh, work it was. And I just remember it was, at that time, the hardest thing I'd ever done in my life. It was very hot and a lot of work. Practices, summer practices, summer band camp. All I remember is they were hot and sweaty and miserable. It was brutal. Yeah, it was, it was hot. I, I keep forgetting, I mean, during those days, nobody had um, a water bottle or anything like that. So we always had to go to the spigot. You know, like, again, again, you're drilling it. Again, one more time, do it this. 16 counts, eight counts, do the drill, do it again, again, again. And you're thinking to yourself, what did I get myself into? And I hope it's really worth all this. And uh, when am I gonna drink some water? No, there were not a lot of water breaks. Uh, reset, do it one more time. I mean, water, you're talking about. And then to go to band camp and have some short, fat guy with this big stick push it into our backs to make sure the lines were straight? Why? There we go, so you, you, um, you, go, to, you go to the high school and uh, you decide, well, there's 24 high schools in Dade County and they're all show bands. And they all have concert French horns and they all have uh, concert baritones and they all have sousaphones and, and, uh, and so, what do you do? You decide to be avant-garde. You decide you're gonna have a core style marching band. Change the uniform, make it sleek and fitted and modern uh, for the time. I hear there have been complaints about this uniform. I'm Walter Strump, and I actually was partially responsible for these, but let me tell you something. These were a blessing, because if it wasn't for me, you would have been wearing these. These are 100% wool-lined band uniforms made in Michigan. They were not conducive for marching in South Florida, but let me tell you something. Not only were these things hot and miserable, we got laughed at. We got laughed at wherever we marched. This was embarrassing. So I don't wanna hear any complaints about those nice polyester uniforms with the silver cummerbunds, because they were way better than this. Oh. It was something special to be part of those first few years of the Pioneer Regiment uh, because at first everybody in the county was looking at us like, what is it that you're trying to do? And then little by little, they wanted to figure out how they could do it. When we had to compete, I was extremely nervous. High strung person, um, very competitive, and wanted to do very well, wanted everyone to do very well. So 
Yeah, it did affect me. It was much more fun when we were just going to Circus World or Disney World and just marching and just having a good time. We were the only thing in the school that got to go on really fun trips. Um, and as a, as a seventh grader, as a child, being able to, to go with, you know, with 100 plus people on charter buses and go up to, to Disney and to uh, SeaWorld and the, the theme parks and do parades and all these things we, we, you, you would never have been able to do. And a lot of us, you know, we came from families who couldn't afford to do that. Some of us, that was our first time going to a theme park, going to Disney World or anything like that. My first time going to Circus World is when we had gone up to March Inn. I guess it was Walt Disney World. Waking up at four in the morning, and you see the buses lined up at, at the band room, and everyone got their crap and luggage. It was pretty exciting, you know, trying to pick uh, bunk mates. <laughs> yeah, and then going on. Oh gosh, I, I forgot who I slept with, but it, I think I was in the nerdy group. Yeah. Oh, God. oh, great, thanks. I could, I could walk by a, a Trailways bus now and you smell the exhaust, boom. Takes me right back to going to St. Pete or to wherever. And I'll never forget going backstage and seeing behind the scenes of Disney. That was the coolest thing. But we'd all be laughing and having a good time. And you know, we, this one was dating that one, and that one was dating this one, this was cheating, that one was going to you know. And so all the drama that is. So I remember a couple things like that going on. Unfortunately, the stuff I remember about bus rides is who I was making out with. Talk about that. <laughs> you and a girl? <laughs> well, yeah, they were girls. But yes, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, I remember just, you know, taking boxes and boxes of world's finest chocolate, taking them home, and everybody's parents had to take boxes to work and so on, and uh, just selling, you know, doing whatever you needed to do to get on this trip. And, 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 you, and we would, because we were so excited to do it. Uh, but it was so much fun. <laughs> John Filoni's newly constructed Pioneer Regiment was a carnival of color, sound, and excitement, and he and his new assistant coach, Robert Hester, embarked on a laser-focused quest for the elusive first place in field trophy. But on the cusp of victory, tragedy would strike. The band was just on fire, and we had the week before we were at the Boca Raton show, and we were grand champions. We had just really uh, were the talk of the whole state. And uh, we went up to St. Pete, and the show was really just, it was magical, it really was. Uh, when it came to retreat, we didn't win. And we saw almost the same bands from the week before, and we ended up, I think we were fifth or something. I do remember one time, uh, we were at a competition, and Mr. Hessner did not agree with one of the judges, who I think was very unfair to us. Yeah, one of the judges didn't like us at all, and, and boy, Hester Furious. We had received all ones, and we, this judge put us in last place. And Mr. Hester just wanted to find out why. I believe he said to the man, uh, I just want to know how you came to this conclusion, and was questioning him, and the man asked, are you questioning my ability? And Mr. Hester said, no, I'm questioning your integrity because, like me, he thought that we were definitely better than last place. Well, we walked back over across the street to the hotel, and we had a little meeting, and he said, you guys did win out there. And he goes, you know what? You deserve a victory concert. He goes, you have five minutes, go upstairs, get your instruments, and get your uniforms, and get back down in this parking lot. So we, we went upstairs, getting drums, bringing them down. The hotel people were like, what is going on? There's 150 kids running with instruments at 11 o'clock at night. So uh, we set up a concert arc outside that hotel, and uh, I remember just kicking in New York Fantasy, and uh, it, was, it was amazing. That was one of my most memorable moments, better than any trophy or anything like that. And that year, it, it finally clicked. We went to St. Pete, we won the parade, and we also won the, uh, the field. But I remember Ginger and I were like so happy, we started like, you know, laughing when they announced all the bands, because we were like the last one, and we knew we had won. When we won, 
It was almost surreal. I couldn't believe it because I thought we were great all the other times when we didn't win. And so I remember Faloni saying, yeah, I saw you and Ginger laughing, smiling, moving around, you know, because, you know, once you won a competition, you're supposed to do something like, you know, some crazy thing. It was a great feeling. It was a great feeling. It felt like finally, all of our hard work, we were finally recognized for what we were. That was probably when, we, when I first realized what all the hard work was for. Why were we doing this? Why were we working so hard? With that said, competitions were nerve wracking, but boy, when you got that plaque or that trophy, uh, you were tingling. You're like, all that hard work, all that sweat, and my God, we sweat a lot. The achievement was phenomenal. What does all this mean? It means that we were, we were all had the opportunity to be a part of, of a great program led by a really fine music educator. And somebody who gave everybody there involved a lifetime of memories because of what we did, because of the friends we made, but also because of the excellence. It occurred to me later in life how incredibly important John Filoni was to so many kids. And we were just one year, uh, John taught for, I think, 30 plus years or something. So there may be hundreds and hundreds of kids long after I left the school system that feel exactly the way I feel. Outside of the normal school hours, he could uh, you know, just go home, but he had time for us to train us, to, to teach us, educate us. Um, and I look at it as we became a, a family in that group. I had not an awesome child. It wasn't bad. And in retrospect, when you grow up, you look back and many had it worse. But he knew that I was an awkward guy, you know, and he knew that I had some, some challenges. And he would reach out to make sure things were, were okay. My mom and dad would go away for months at a time and leave me and my brother alone. And I'd be scared. I was in, you know, 12 years old or whatever, being home alone. And he would know that. So he'd call me up and say, hey, Steve, it's Mr. Fye. Do you want to go get dinner? Uh, with me or do you want to do this or that or hey what's going on or you know and he really cared today I don't think teachers would ever do that I'm not sure teachers are allowed to do that he he gave me at the time some sort of discipline and I, I was I was a pretty wild child my family was a little wild and so when I joined band it was like I didn't really have that kind of structure and discipline here I was with this this guy who was very regimented it was a whole new world and that world of structure is probably something that more than anything else he gave me. Mr. Fi had so much confidence in me in both junior high and senior high. I ended up starting a pep band in school and producing events and, well, jumping ahead a couple decades, starting my own special event company. To this day, when we produce events, the values that Mr. Fi instilled in me all those years ago are there, they're present, they're with us every day. I didn't realize what a great guy I was until I myself had kids and was able to reflect back on my own challenges and then later my successes in life. And a lot of my success, even today, I reflect back to the discipline and the love of this band director, John Farloni, who himself had, had to be only in his 20s, I suppose, when I think back. I mean, his confidence in me read a self-confidence that, that led me to do things that I didn't know I had in me. And um, eventually, after college, it gave me the fearlessness to start my own business a year after I graduated. But then it gave, it gave everyone else the skills to feel successful in life, feel like you could do anything you want to do, because in this program, you did stuff you never thought you could do, gave, gave you self-confidence, and gave you something that you can remember the, your entire life. He taught us that even if you weren't maybe the best at something, if you worked hard, that was 90% of it. And I certainly learned that because I was not a great musician. I could say one thing that I learned from Filoni and from being in band camps and from being uh, you know, in the hot sun and marching and doing is that um, nothing, at least in my life, nothing comes easy. It takes a lot of hard work and it takes a lot of repetition. You know, when I was in college, I was like, uh, you know, I'm not particularly, I don't have IQs off the chart, but I made straight A's. And the reason was, because I was tenacious. I was like, I'm gonna do it again, and again, and again, until I get it right. And it was exactly like marching band. There's no question that your graduates 
in life and everything else have succeeded because of the care and love that you showed so many hundreds of students. And I'm privileged and blessed to have known you as a student and then later catch up with you 30 years later as an adult. Mr. Fye, I want to thank you for all, all the years. Um, you're, you're basically like a part of my extended family. So John, I just want to say to you that I'm truly thankful that I got to meet you and develop such a, a, a close friendship with you, but uh, also that you got to be my, my mentor and my role model as a, as a kid because um, I didn't have a father and I didn't know what I wanted to do. I hope you know how much we all care for you, especially I care for you immensely. Uh, you've changed my life in too many ways and probably my entire family life. Certainly my children now, uh, I'm trying to get them into music and uh, instill some of the values that you instilled in us. And it's so much integrity and, and so much passion for everything you did uh, that I decided I want to be an educator. So I've been a band director and a school administrator for over 25 years now. And I still draw on a lot of those principles that, uh, that you, you taught us and instilled in us. And uh, I just want to thank you. I do remember the last thing he said to me. He looked at me right in the eye and he said, Walter Strump, you will go far in life. And he, he clearly knew that I wasn't going into music, so he must have had confidence in this statement. But it meant so much to me that that became a driving force, and I, I think the confidence he gave me at that point was probably the best gift any mentor could have given somebody. So I wanted to say, Mr. Filoni, I'm so glad we're doing this for you tonight. I want to thank you <clears throat> for never letting me down. I am very much today who I am because of you, and I know I speak for hundreds of kids when I say, get out, get out, get out, get out. And I hope you're enjoying your night, Mr. Fi. We love you. We've always looked up to you. We always, uh, you know, everyone wanted to be you. <laughs> and uh, so appreciate everything that you've given everybody here. And 40 years later, people still remember. The things we learned in marching band were not how to play an instrument. It wasn't how to march. Uh, it wasn't how to be friends, but how to be close friends, how to work hard, and what the hard work gets you in the end. What's it, why do we do this? Why do we work hard? Why did you push us? Those are the things that we remember, that I remember. And those are the lessons that have touched, I have to say, hundreds of kids, now adults, and the reach that you've had and the positive impact you've had on, on numerous hundreds of people is unbelievable. All of us sitting here wish we had that kind of impact. And all I can say is thank you. Won't you come see about me? I'll be alone dancing, you know it, baby. Troubles and doubts Giving me everything Inside and out And love strange So real in the dark Think of the tender things That we were working on Slow change may pull us apart When the light gets into 